Now in this tutorial the aim is to show you how certain fractions integrate back to natural log functions. But in order to introduce this I'm going to have to step backwards and just remind you what we got when we differentiated y equals a natural log of a function of x. The result that you get is that dy dx equals f dash x, that's the first differential of f of x, over f of x. Now this is a result, as I say, I've, I've shown this actually in one of my tutorials on my website, examsolutions.co.uk. Just look under differentiating natural log functions and you'll find how we arrive at this particular result. Now, assuming that you're familiar with this, okay, let's just give you a demo. Okay, suppose for instance we had y equaled the natural log of say 3x squared minus 1. And we had to differentiate this to find dy dx. Well, according to this result, our f of x is the 3x squared minus 1 and this would go in the denominator, the bottom part of the fraction, so that would be 3x squared minus 1. And in the numerator here goes the differential of f of x, in other words the 3x squared minus 1. And if we differentiate 3x squared minus 1 with respect to x, you just get 6x. Now where's this all leading to? Well, if we differentiate something, then integration must be the inverse of that. So if, in other words, I had to integrate 6x over 3x squared minus 1 with respect to x, then because the numerator here is a differential of the denominator, I know it came from this kind of idea, so it must have resulted in differentiating a natural log function. And in this example, it was the natural log of 3x squared minus 1. The natural log of the denominator here. And we must always put natural logs in mod signs when we integrate because this value must be a positive value. And then we have the constant of integration, which you mustn't forget. Now where's this going to in general? Well, what I'm trying to say is that if we find that we've got a fractional integral and we have a situation where in the denominator is our function of x, if we look towards the top and we notice that it's the differential of the denominator here, then it must have come from differentiating the natural log of some function of x, this function of x. And don't forget, always put it in a mod sign. Now this is a very important result and one that we're going to work with in the next few examples. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll try a few examples then using this result. Now then, let's take the first example. Let's suppose we've got the fraction and in this fraction we have the denominator uh, 5x squared minus 3. 5x squared minus 3 then is our function of x. Now if I differentiate this I get 10x. Now not every integral that you get is going to have, say, a 10x at the top here. It's not going to be the differential, should I say, of the denominator. But we're only looking at those types. Okay? And if it is one of those types, then it must have resulted in differentiating the natural log of this denominator, this function of x underneath here. The mod, then, of 5x squared minus 3 and then the plus c. Now, not all integrals are going to be as straightforward as this. Okay? 
Let's take the denominator again, 5x squared minus 3. And we're integrating with respect to x. So if this is going to be a natural log type, we've said that we must have a differential of the denominator, in this case 10x on the top here. But I don't have to have 10x actually, as long as I have a number times x, then it will still result in a log type. Let me show you. Suppose we had, say, 7x, a number times x in this case. What I can do is I can say that this is the same as 7. Okay, I can pull the 7 because it's a constant. I couldn't do this if this was a letter, okay, a variable. But because it's a constant, I can pull it out the front of the integral. I'd like a 10 there inside. I'd like 10x actually, but I want that 10. But 7 times 10 gives me 70 not 7. But if I divide by 10, 7 tenths of 10 is going to be that 7. Then I put this over my denominator, 5x squared minus 3, with respect to x. And you notice now I have got this situation. Okay. We know the integral of this. It's up here. It's the natural log of 5x squared minus 3 only I've got the constant 7 tenths in the front. So the answer is going to be 7 tenths of the natural log of the mod of 5x squared minus 3, and then plus the constant. Okay, let's just try it with another one. Okay. It can be any denominator. Let's suppose we've got a cubic, x cubed minus 2x, plus 1. Now if this was to be a natural log type, I would expect to see then the differential of the denominator here in the numerator. And the differential of this is 3x squared minus 2. And so it follows this pattern that it must have been the natural log then of f of x, x cubed minus 2x plus 1 all modded, and then the constant of integration. But what happens, again, if we take the same denominator, x cubed minus 2x plus 1, integrate with respect to x, but differentiating this, we've seen, gives 3x squared minus 2. But it doesn't have to be 3x squared minus 2 that's on the top, as long as it is any number times 3x squared minus 2, it would lead back to a log. If I doubled this, for instance, if I wrote 6x squared minus 4 on the top, you can see that I've doubled 3x squared minus 2. So I could pull out a 2 outside the integral, write 3x squared minus 2 in there, okay, x cubed minus 2x plus 1 on the bottom, and this is OK. I've got a constant out the front of the integral, that's fine, as long as I don't bring out variables. OK? We know the answer to this integral is up here. It's a natural log type because the top is a differential of the bottom. But I multiply it by a constant, and so the answer is going to be 2 times the natural log then of the mod of x cubed minus 2x plus 1 and then plus c. So you might find then that when you get a fraction to integrate, okay, the first thing you should check out is if I differentiate the denominator, have I got that sitting in the numerator or have I got some number multiplied by that differential? If I have then it resolves back to a natural log type.